first time in American history, our government is putting into effect a nationwide old age pension system as part of the Social Security Act. The only section under which all 26 million workers are registering is the section relating to old age benefits. It is not unemployment insurance. It is not a fund from which you can borrow, even if you lose your job and are in need. But it is a pension fund, with the government paying you a monthly check when you reach 65, if you then stop working. The United States Treasury, with your contributions and your employer's contributions, will build up the old age reserve account, from which the benefits will be paid. Your employer is required by the law to make deductions from your earnings starting January 1st, 1937, provided you are eligible for old age benefits. If you are less than 65 on the first of next year and are a salaried employee or wage earner, you come under the law. The only exceptions are if you work for the federal, state, or local government if you work for yourself, if you are employed by a railroad, if you are a seaman, a farm worker, a domestic servant in a private home, or work for a non-profit organization. To see how the act functions, let us first analyze what you pay in. Starting January 1st, 1937, each worker will have 1% of his wages deducted weekly for three years through 1939. In 1940, the tax will rise to 1.5%. In 1943, the tax will become 2%. And in 1946, it will increase to 2.5%. Then in 1949 and thereafter, it will be 3%. The employer will match the worker's contribution dollar for dollar during the entire period. From the start, the tax is limited to the first $3,000 earned in any one year by an employee. The fund thus built up will provide benefit payments starting in 1942. Now let's take an average example like John Jones. He is 25 years of age, earning $25 per week or $1,300 a year. While most earnings vary through life, we will assume Jones stays at the same salary as long as he works, to simplify this explanation. In 1937, Jones will pay $13, or 1% of his earnings. By the end of 1939, he will have paid a total of $39. The next three years, at 1.5%, he will pay $19.50 a year, making his total contributions $97.50. For 1943 through 1945, his tax will be $26 a year, increasing his total to $175.50. For 1946 through 1948, he will pay $32.50 a year, making a total of $273. From 1949, he will pay $39 per year, 3% of his earnings, until in 1977, he reaches the age of 65. Thus, during 40 years, Jones will have paid in $1,365, which his employer has matched dollar for dollar, making a total payment of $2,730 into the fund. Now let's see what you and Jones get back in old age benefits. These benefits are not based on what he paid in, but on what he earned during his 40 years. Total earnings of $52,000. Figured on this total, Jones will get a monthly benefit payment of $52.91 for life. Now suppose Jones' father, John Jones Sr., is 60 years of age in 1937 and earns $400 a year in a part-time job. In five years, he will have earned a total of $2,000, on which he has paid a tax of $24. This entitles him to the minimum monthly benefit of $10. The maximum monthly benefit is $85, 
for anyone whose total taxable earnings amount to $129,000. With a limitation of $3,000 a year, it would take 43 years to qualify for the maximum benefit. Lump sum payments are provided if a worker dies before receiving benefits. For instance, if Jones Sr. dies just before he reaches 65, his estate will receive $70, which is 3.5% of his $2,000 earnings. In no case does the worker or his estate get less than he paid in. Remember, whether you are an office boy earning $480 a year, or a salaried executive earning $10,000 a year, you come under the old age benefit section of the law. And no matter how much you make, only the first $3,000 a year is taxed. Mark January 1st, 1937 on your calendar now. It will mark not only the beginning of a happy new year, but of a new epoch in American life.